Good evening, good evening, good evening. This is the day that the Lord had made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're thankful and grateful to the Almighty God for our being here. And our being here is not against our will, but it is a gift from the Lord. Let us begin this evening uh, with one of the old standards. What a friend we have in Jesus. Eternal God, our Father, we are thankful and grateful for another opportunity to come before thy throne of mercy and try and turn thee some humble thanks. We thank you, O oh God, that things are as well as they are. We thank you for last night's laying down and this morning's early rising. We thank you for allowing your angels to watch over us and keep us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. We thank you, O oh God, for these that have joined us here tonight, that we might go through and study your word. We thank you, O oh God, for we realize we live in troubled times. We ask, O oh God, that you would look on the bereaved among us tonight, for there are so many that are bereaved. We just got word from a young man that he's suffering a loss in his family. We pray that you would Give him the strength and let him know that you put no more on us than we are able to bear. 
We ask that you look on our nation, O oh God, as we are in the midst of a trying time. And we are on the brink of destroying everything that many have worked so hard for centuries to build. And yet here we are about to destroy it all just for the sake of the ego of some rootless and careless people. We ask, oh God, bless the United States, not only the United States, but bless all nations of the earth. Look on the Middle East where war is raging. Help them, oh God, to put aside their differences and make peace so that they can live in harmony with one another. This and all blessings we ask in thy son Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. We're certainly thankful and grateful for our being here tonight. We're thankful for all of you that are with us on Facebook and those that are with us on the conference line. It's all good tonight as we once again talk about how to be a good listener. One of the things that we talked about uh, last week and the final thing that we closed out with was let the person that you're there counseling, let them talk. Don't you do all the talking. Let them talk. Sometimes uh, I think we forget uh, one of the major things that we need to be able to do as a counselor or a comforter is we need to be good listeners. We have to listen to what the person that's complaining is saying. Listen and let them get it off their chest. Now tonight we're going to take up uh, this And, well, we told you on last week that there were seven requirements to being a good listener. Number one is let the person talk. Number two that we're going to start at tonight is don't argue or correct the person. No matter how wrong you think the person is, just nod your head in affirmation that you are willing to that you are listening to what he or she is saying. Also, don't act surprised at what the person said, no matter how belligerent, how harsh or bitter it might seem. Never respond hastily to what hurting people are saying. Arguing or trying to correct them are trying to correct what they say it usually will cause the hurting person to stop talking and that will only anger him or her more instead do what take heed to the warning in Proverbs 29 and 20 Proverbs 29 and 20 says and this is from the New King James do you see a man hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Let them vent. I attended a gathering of pastors on last Saturday. And when we come together, we take a phrase from uh, the old comedy hour that used to come on on the HBO on Saturday nights. Can I vent? And preachers, pastors in particular, we sit around the table and we break bread and we vent. Things that are bothering us. Things that we just need to get off our chest. So that we can better serve 
God's people. Sometimes you just need somebody to listen to you. Don't need to give you an opinion. Just listen. More than anything else, hurting people need to vent their hurt, their frustrations, and their anger. They need to get, out, get it off their chest. Let them talk. Don't try to correct their grammar. Don't try to tell them you misspoke. Just listen. Let them vent. And listen without criticism or correction. The third thing that you need to do to be a good listener is feel free to ask questions. If you don't understand what the person is saying, ask questions. Ask questions. Let the speaker know you really want to understand what he or she is saying. What do you mean when you say? Or what are you referring to when you say? Most of us are so anxious to express our own genius or relate our own experiences. We don't have the patience to listen. Consoling a hurting person often offers a great opportunity to obey the commandment in James 1 and 19. James 1 and 19 says, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. In other words, a lot of times we talk when we ought to be listening. We think we know stuff when we don't know nothing. We think we got all the answers when you don't even know what that person is going through. You talking about eggs and they talking about apples. When we talk too much and listen too little, we communicate, we communicate to others that we think our ideas are more important than theirs. James wisely advises us to reverse the process. Listen. James said, let every man be swift to hear. Listen, slow to speak and slow to wrath. Listen, think before you speak. A lot of times that's what gets us in trouble. We start talking before we gather all the facts. Instead of us listening to what the person is saying, our brain finishes their sentences so that we can start formulating an answer before we've actually heard the statement. And when you finish, and when they finish the statement and you heard all of what they said, if you are slow to speak, you might find out that what you had in mind was completely off base. When we talk too much and listen too little, we communicate to others that our ideas are more important than theirs. Now, you know what country folks say about folks that talk a lot. Country folks say folks that talk a lot lie a lot. You don't want to fall into that category. You want to be a not only a good advisor, but a good listener. Don't be afraid of silence. Silence. 
it is very difficult to keep silent when no one is talking. However, breaking periods of silence may rob people of what they need most. Perhaps they are building up courage to share something. Or they are trying to collect their thoughts to express them clearly. Every hurting person needs some quiet moments to think. I need to think before I say what I'm going to say because I don't want it to come out wrong. I don't want you to get the wrong impression, so I need to be careful how I word this. And there are times when I don't care how careful you are, you still end up putting your foot in your mouth. But silence is golden. Silence. You can hear your brain working. Silence. If the hurting person begins to weep, give him or her a reassuring touch. Hurting people need some kind of reassuring, a loving touch. During his time here, Jesus often saw the need to touch a hurting person. For example, a leper came to Jesus, kneeled before him, and asked to be healed. And what does a, and what does the Lord do? He reached out and he touched him. In Matthew 8 and 3 it says, Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing. Be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Sometimes just a gentle touch, a reassuring touch, is enough to help a person get through a rough period, to get through adversity. Because that touch says, Somebody cares. I didn't think anybody cared about my situation, but somebody cares. Now, I'm not talking. I know some, we got some folks that they create stuff. They create adversity just to get your sympathy because they like being pampered. Those kind of people, uh, they kind of get on my nerves. Because when you see them, your first thought is, what's wrong now? Because no matter where you see them, something wrong. Something just happened. Some tragedy. Some adversity is going on. That makes it difficult for you to have sympathy and empathy for other folks. Now, number six, I kind of disagree with. It says, the, look the speaker in the eye. Always have your eyes focus on the speaker's eyes as you listen. His or her eyes will tell you something his mouth or her mouth is not telling you. While comforting, hurting people, remember the fact that's found in Proverbs 20 and 12. Proverbs 20 and 12 says, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord has made them both. Every good we possess comes from God. And we should neither use our eyes nor our ears 
nor anything we possess, but in the strict subservitude to the will of God. Everything you have belongs to God. And you ought to use everything you have to serve the Lord. You ought to be submissive to God with everything you have. Listening and hearing and seeing good in others. That comes from God. Well, I know sometimes we get a little anxious. We want to solve the problem. We don't want to just be listeners. We want to solve the problem. We want to solve it. Cause we want, want, want them to see how much sense we get. But you need to learn how to be a good listener. Listen with your head. Two ways to listen with your head. Nodding in agreement and tilting your head forward. Both show your total attention because Job's three friends have been very selective in their observation about wicked people. He asked them, why the wicked grow old and increase in power? Everyone knows wicked people who never seem to experience God's judgment in this life. Job points out, there are many wicked people whose houses are safe and who have a great time celebrating with musical instruments. Lies say they live their lives in wealth and then go to their graves. They say a they say to God, depart from us and have no desire to know his ways. Job 21, verse 7 through 16. Job says, they think they are prosperous in their own doing, but he does not accept the way, that way of thinking. So he, obvious, so it's obvious to Job that wicked people do prosper because God allows it. He allows it to rain on the just as well as the unjust. Well, Job points out he has rarely seen any wicked people suffer as he is suffering. It is difficult to understand. It's difficult why God allows the wicked to prosper and the good to suffer. Believing his three friends are trying to put God in a box. This is what Job asks in verse 22 of chapter 21. He said, a wise man scaleth the city of the mighty and bring down the truck the trusted stronghold. Wisdom in many respects preferred, preferred, referred to strength even in the case of defenses. See what skills does the fortification and the reduction of the strong place have. In other words, do his friends think they have more knowledge than God? Their simplistic theology has made them obvious to the obvious. God often allows the wicked to prosper and the righteous to suffer. In verse 23 through 26, of chapter 21, Job says, there are no set rules to govern even the wicked or the righteous. In some instances, 
both types prosper and suffer. Knowing his three friends' response will be the same. Job says, know your thoughts. And then in verse 29, Proverbs, in Proverbs 1, 29, here is the thought. A wicked man hardens his face, but as for the upright, he establishes his way. Job is saying, you guys don't give, get out much, or you know, or you would know better than what you're telling me. Job concludes by saying his friends can't comfort him with nonsense. And all the answers are false. Proverbs 21 and 30 said, There is no wisdom or understanding or counseling against the Lord. To become a good listener, you need to eliminate apathetic behavior. You need to investigate the behavior of a good listener. You need to understand that everybody, everybody cannot be a good listener. Some of us listen a lot better than others. Some of us just have a natural gift for listening. Therefore, we can help hurting people get through their adversity. And you don't never know before you condemn a person, you need, you don't know what they're going through. You don't know what the circumstances are. You don't know what caused them to be the way that they are. Sometimes folk have been hurt to the point where they want to take their own lives. And instead of you going there trying to encourage them you go there trying to correct them they already feeling bad by the, about themselves and you trying to correct them just makes them feel that much worse you mean to tell me so and so is smarter than me if anything you need to make them think that they're smarter than you ask that you and that's my time for tonight I've, I've said uh, all that I need to say tonight ask that you be prayerful we just received word from one of the members of the old timers that they lost one of he lost one of his family members uh, in the Bonner family so be prayerful and pray for the Bonner family. We ask that you keep all of the sick and the shut in lifted up. Keep them lifted up. We got so much sickness, so many folks sick now, and I got a feeling it's going to get worse before it gets better. Just trust in the Lord that he will make everything come out all right. Too many of us are suffering today because we are trying to be smarter than God. But trust in the Lord with all that heart and lean not to thy own understanding. That is the word of the, of the Lord. Trust him. Trust him for one thing. Trust him for all things. And God bless you and keep you. Here's our prayer. Eternal God, our Father, as we come to the close of the study of your word, we thank you, O oh God. We thank you for this opportunity. We ask, O oh God, that you would continue to bear with us, that you would give us a chance to get ourselves together. And then, O oh God, we pray for your guidance when we do straight. Lead us back unto 
the fold. For we're sheep and we need to be guided. We need a shepherd and you are the great shepherd. We ask that you would bless each and every nation on the face of the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.